Uh, Michael, thanks for joining us at Big Sam. Thank you, Steve. Great to be here. <laughs> uh, obviously, we're going to focus on, you've written two fantastic books, Come As You Are, The Nirvana Story, but um, our band can be your life, uh, focusing on the American Indie Underground during the 80s to the early 90s. Can you tell us why you were attracted to that particular era in American music history? It, um, I was watching a, uh, a rock documentary one evening, and it was the history of punk. And uh, they got up to, uh, I think it was Talking Heads. And then uh, suddenly the action skipped straight to Nirvana. And I thought, perhaps I'd blacked out for 10 minutes <laughs> and missed the part about Black Flag and the Minutemen and the Replacements and Sonic Youth, all those bands in between Talking Heads and Nirvana. But no, that just had not, I had not in fact blacked out. <laughs> they just had skipped over an entire decade of punk rock very influential music that led up to Nirvana. And um, I, had, I had done a book about Nirvana, and I, I just felt like uh, someone needed to tell that backstory. And no one, it was completely ignored. This whole generation of music that was so great, and a, a community and a scene that was so, so thriving and, and so uh, inspiring had just been glossed over by the history books, like, like something out of a George Orwell novel. And I decided someone should do something about that. So in typical DIY spirit, I said, I will do something about it. And I started on that book. I wrote Our Band Could Be Your Life. Uh, started on that a few months later. Fantastic. You chose, you, you focus on a dozen or so bands. You mm. mentioned a number of them. What did they have in common? What drew you to those particular acts? Mm. Uh, well, each, each band represented uh, a a step in the evolution of that scene, starting from a, a real Johnny Appleseed kind of band like Black Flag that really blazed a trail across America, um, starting the, the germ of a, a, a series of venues across the country so bands could tour. There weren't even places for bands like that to play. It's hard for people to understand that now, but there were not places for indie rock bands to play. It was either you know very large venues or arenas or stadiums, or uh, it was cover bands playing in bars. But you didn't see bands playing original music in America in the late 70s, early 80s. So the punk rock bands blazed that trail, and it's now well established, but it, it didn't exist then. So, uh, and then each successive step of the way, there's some band that represents some sort of uh, uh, progression after that, either um, a very influential band, uh, a legendary figure, um, or uh, a scene, um, so you, maybe a legendary figure might be Steve Albini. Why is Steve Albini so famous? Well, he was in this band called Big Black. Um, how did the Seattle scene start? Well, I'll tell you, it really was, had a lot to do with this band Mud Honey and Sub Pop Records. Um, what about the Minneapolis scene I keep hearing about? Well, there was man, the two bands, Husker Du and The Replacements. Each band is emblematic of some, something really important. And more, more, almost as importantly, each band has a really great story. I just love to tell a good story. <laughs> um, you, you have mentioned to me before that in particular you're inspired by the, the Butthole Surface mm. story. Can you tap me through what, what they did that yeah. resonated with you? Um, I, I think that the Butthole Surface were one of the most depraved rock bands ever. Uh, and. Um, I think they will freely admit to doing lots of controlled substances and, and naughty acts and doing some very bizarre things on stage. Uh, and people thought they were mighty weird. But they also had an incredible work act ethic that I think uh, extends throughout our Bank of Beer life. These were people who were so dedicated to their craft that they would pile five band members and a dog into a subcompact car take out the, the, the back seat so three people on the dog could lie with their heads in the boot while the car drove down the highway full of equipment. That is dedication. And uh, that is very inspiring. As, as, you know, as, as sick and depraved as the butthole surfers were, they were very dedicated to, to their craft and they worked hard to, to do what they loved. And that is incredibly relevant to now. You know, you, it, you should not be in it for the money because it's really hard to make money as ever in the music business. So you do it for the love. And if you're gonna do it for the love, you have to work hard. 
You, you just touched on the next question I was going to ask. The infrastructure, so much has changed in the ensuing 20 years. Yeah. But there is so many of the lessons gleaned from our band could be your life are still relevant mm. to bands starting out today. Mm. Yeah, well, it's funny. I mean, I, I get approached by younger bands all the time saying they were inspired, you know, by Our Band Could Be Your Life. I, I get so many people saying that to me, and it's so wonderful to hear. Um, and I think part of it is that uh, they realize that, yeah, uh, you know, it, it has never come on a platter. It will never come on a platter. You have to work to make your own luck. You have to put yourself in a, in a position where luck will shine on you. And uh, if, you know, if there's a lesson in that book, that's what it is. You know, uh, work hard, be inspired, make great music. And maybe you won't become rich, but you'll get to do the thing you love. Fantastic. For um, aspiring music journalists out there, can you tell us your take on the current situation? I, I know you've um, embraced the blogosphere, yeah. so to speak. Do, how do you find the field for authors these days in music? I have a blog called You and What Army, and um, I, it gives me a chance to write about things I wouldn't normally write about professionally. For instance, I'm writing about a Miles Davis live DVD from 1969. Not many uh, magazines would accept an 1,800-word piece about that, but I get to do that on my blog. And if you want to read it, bless you. <laughs> um, but you know, blogging is where it's at. And blogging is almost entirely criticism. It's not necessarily journalism. Um, criticism is something that you can do in your pajamas sitting at your laptop. Uh, but to do journalism, you have to get out. You know, or you have to do, you, know, you can do a phoner. But basically, you can't make it up. You actually have to do research and find facts and assimilate it into a story. And that, I think, is uh, uh, an art that is on the wane uh, at the moment, but it may come back. Um, I think I would like to think that people are curious to read quality writing, uh, quality feature writing about artists they're interested in, rather than reading someone's opinion about the music. Um, I'm I'm kind of hoping that's that's the way it will happen. But right now, music magazines are folding left and right, and there's not a venue for journalism. But I think that a model will emerge because uh, I think that there is. A demand for it, and when there's the demand, there will be someone to supply it. Fantastic. But if, um, on the subject of music conferences such as the Big Sound one, you've obviously travelled a long way to deliver your keynote. Mm. Do you find them an integral part of uh, the music community moving forward? Um, you know, we we are in what uh, the music business cliche is, uh, has called uh, the current environment, which is the uh, the problem of illegal downloading. And I think the question is how to turn that problem into an asset. And that is a very, very difficult question to, to answer. And things like, like big sound and music conventions in general are, are big melting pots of ideas, places where people can meet, exchange thoughts, impart information and insights. And that can only really be achieved face to face. Um, you know, chat forums and you know, email messages and things like that, it's, it's just not the same as, as meeting people face to face, having, having chance meetings, meeting new people. Um, that's, that's where I think really, really interesting stuff happens in music and in the music business. And that's what a, a convention like Big Sound will do. It's, it's, a, it's a crucible for thoughts about uh, how to move the music industry forward. When you obviously here to impart your experience, do you also look to take something from a an event like Big Sound? Uh, oh, sure, yeah. I, I'm, I'm here at Big Sound to, to soak up uh, new music and new ideas and new people, you know. Um, yeah, I had dinner with a couple of really interesting uh, people last night that I had, didn't know before but knew through a mutual friend and uh, gave me actually a lot of hope for the music industry if people that young are that bright. I, you know, I, th I think we're going to be okay if people like that are, are around. So. That, you know, not only did I learn things, but I got inspired, and that was great. And again, you wouldn't get that just from trading emails with a friend. You have to meet these people face to face almost by accident, and things happen. It's great. Are you excited about the future of music looking forward? There's a lot of doubt, you know, not doubt, but people are trying to 
trying to work out how it's going to exist under the new models? Um, are you excited? Everyone wants to know the answer to this question. How will the music business go forward? And I, I think it will go forward. We just don't know how yet. It's music. Music is essential to human experience. And it will always be around. It's been around since some caveman sat around the fire imitating bird calls. And it will find a way. We just don't know what it is yet. And uh, I think it's, it's, you know, it's like that Chinese curse uh, may you live in interesting times. You know, we live in interesting times. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, Michael, thanks on behalf of Big Sound. Thank you so much for coming out and oh. thank you for having a chat to us right now. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Cheers. As always. <laughs>